Okay, let's talk about the uh, liquidity management for a bank. Liquidity risk for a bank means bank may not meet cash withdrawal request. So I'm going to use the bank A and B to illustrate liquidity risk. So here is the simple balance sheet of the bank A. Here is the balance sheet of the bank B. And if you look at the liability and equity side, these banks are almost the same. Both have a deposit $100. Both have a bank capital $10. But if you look at the asset side, the two banks deal with the assets in the different ways. For the bank A, we can see the reserve is $20. So which means this bank has a required reserve $10. How can we know this bank has a required reserve $10? Remember, we mentioned before Required reserve ratio in America is 10%. So 10% multiplied by deposit $100. That's the requirement from the Federal Reserve Central Bank. Commercial bank at least need to put a 10% as a required reserve. So that's what, uh, how we get the $10 here. So if this bank have a $10 Required reserve, which means it also have an access reserve. Access reserve will be ten dollar as well. How can we get ten dollar? Because the total reserve is twenty dollar here, and we know ten dollar is required reserve, and we can calculate the rest of the reserve is access reserve. So the this bank lend out eighty dollars loans and the ten dollar and invest into the $10 securities. And let's look at the bank B. The reserve is only $10. And we know for bank B, required reserve is also $10 because of 10% of the deposit. And which means this bank has no assets reserve. It's zero. And this bank lend out more money as a loan. So suppose a customer come to withdraw ten dollar from deposit. What happened to the each bank? Let's first look at the bank A. Let's asset side. Let's liability and equity side. So now how much deposit bank A have? Because the customer withdraw a ten dollar deposit, deposit will reduce by ten dollar. So the new deposit will be ninety dollar. Yeah, remember initially deposit is 100 after we draw the money in the deposit only 90 dollars bank capital still 10 dollars but what happened to the asset side because of the balance sheet the value of the asset is always same as the, the value of the liability and equity in the bank if anyone withdraw the cash bank will use the money in the reserve to meet the withdrawal request. As a result, reserve also reduced by $10. So the remaining reserve is $10. How can we get this $10? We use the $20 here. Initial reserve, subtract $10 withdrawal, we get a reserve $10. So loan here is eighty dollars, 
and the security here, ten dollars. Look at this bank A, the New Balance sheet. Does a bank A meet the Federal Reserve requirement? Ten percent of the deposit should be kept as a reserve. Yes, because right now the bank has a deposit of ninety dollar. Multiply by ten percent, so the required reserve is nine dollar here. For the bank A, and the bank A actually has a nine dollar, so bank still meet the Federal Reserve required reserve required. But what about bank B? Let's look at the bank B after the one customer come here to withdraw the ten dollar, and the deposit will reduce by ten dollar, so deposit remaining remaining value will be ninety dollar bank capital. Remain the same, ten dollars. And the bank B will use the reserve to meet cash withdrawal because ten dollar withdrawal now reserve declined by ten dollar. The new value will be ten. The loan ninety dollars, and the security is ten dollars. Can the B meet the Federal Reserve? Reserve requirement, and we know required reserve here should be deposit ninety dollar times ten percent nine dollar. But look at the bank B new balance sheet; they have a zero dollar in the reserve. This zero dollar is smaller than nine dollar minimum requirement. As a result, bank B may fail. So that's what we talk about the liquidity the management. Because the both bank keep the different amount of the reserve, bank A after withdraw still survive, still can operate. But the bank B after the customer withdraw the cash, they don't have enough reserve in the Federal Reserve System. So bank B will fail. So some of you may ask the question under this case. How the bank B can survive? One way is they can sell the security ten dollars here. If they sell the security ten dollar, the security ten dollar will decline to zero. And because they receive ten dollar from the selling securities, they can put the ten dollar into the reserve. So you can see the security actually. What as the people call secondary reserve. Most of the security bank purchase are the treasury securities, so they are liquid, they are safe, so they can help the bank to meet cash withdrawal under this case.